Appreciate it, guys. Uh, like you said, my name is Chris Knapper. Been coaching in the air raid for a little while. I'm gonna cover the air raid wide receiver drills and skills. I've been doing this for over 10 years. Uh, coach many positions, but my favorite's been wide receivers. If you can see my screen here, uh, I've got my Twitter handle up there. If you guys have any other questions that may not get answered today, feel free to get a hold of me. My email is down there at the bottom, uh, Coach Napper at 92meshstreet.com. I do hang out with George and Joe and Shane Duar sometimes, so that's me there. Uh, this picture on the right before we get started, I kind of want to talk about this for a minute. Obviously, I'm from West Virginia. I'm really proud about that. But um, no matter what we cover today, this is what I think is important, and I think it really shows with everything that's going on right now in the world. Uh, I want to treat my football players like somebody would treat my kids. You know, I think that's a very important thing. I got my boy Noah here. He'll be in here in a minute. My son Eli. Uh, and sometimes that means you got to tell your kids the truth. You know, there's a lot of good times like this picture. There's a lot of other times you got to be dad and lay the law down. So, you know, I tell them, hey, if I didn't like you, you know, if I didn't love you, I won't be honest with you. So I have honest conversations with you. Uh, before I get started real quick, I want to give some shout outs and some people you may want to follow on Twitter. Obviously, Matt Mummy is a great one. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to work with Matt at LaGrange College for a little while. Really, really smart guy. He's one that kind of really got me into the air raid, um, you know, learning from obviously his dad. He was the mastermind of all this. My boy, George Colehart, he's been on here a couple times. You can follow him on Twitter. He does a great job. He runs the 92 Mesh Group. Drew Piscopo, my boy Drew out of Ash County, is one of the best area coaches that I've ever seen. Um, he's amazing. If you got any questions, he's a good one to get a hold of. Shane Duar, my boy Doobie Duar, he's a good one too. He does a great O-line clinic. And then, of course, my man Joe Salas, who is unrivaled when it comes to culture. So those are just some good air raid guys you might want to follow if you're interested in this stuff. When I worked for Coach Mummy, he taught me a uh, air raid philosophy on how to do things. And like I said, we'll get into the drills in just a second. This kind of clears up some stuff for the air raid. Uh, you know, you really want to be able to – the first philosophy is you want to throw the ball quick and short people who can score. So if you think about that, that makes it easier on your O-line. They don't have to block as long. But you really need to be good at catching the football. So you really got to do a lot of these drills are real repetitious. Once they take away throwing the ball short, you want to throw the ball deep to those same people. Okay, so we're running like six or 94 or 95, trying to take advantage of those things. So if they take the away ball short, take it away deep, then you want to run the ball because they've emptied the box out. That's kind of the air raid philosophy. Now, when I coached running backs for Coach Mummy, uh, he told me we had three run plays. We run the draw, we run on the field, and we run off the field. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you can't do more than that. Um, so, you know, just make sure you have a solid run game. And then here was the big thing he taught me that I loved and I thought was great, was you need to play the game before the game. So you need to script things. And that's not just scripting the field when you're talking about plays and stuff. It's scripting your drills and having little words that go along with it while they're in the middle of the game so you can make adjustments. I'm going to start off with wide receiver stance. Um, I'm real big on this. I do think you need a low helmet, okay? I got a picture here I pulled off the internet. I don't know these guys. But my man here on the right, Coach, is doing pretty good in his stance. Uh, you need a low helmet. You want to get below that guy. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in old school football. You know, low helmet wins. So you want to get your helmet underneath his helmet. You want to have your hands up. Coach is in a really good position here. We're going to talk about this later. But use your knife. He's got his fist. You know, this player here, his hands are open. Looks like he's about to work a turntable. I tell him, don't work turntables, guys. Have your fist closed like you're holding a knife. Uh, you want your feet in your armpit. If you look here, if you can see my pointer, coach is doing a really good job of his feet being inside of his armpit. And when I'm teaching these stances, what I'll do is I'll come up beside them and I'll give them a little shove just to make sure that they're, you know, off base. My man here, he's a little close. If I was to shove him, he's going to fall over or he's going to wobble. He's going to take a false step. So the easiest way to get him on width is, you know, you want your – you want your uh, feet inside of your armpits. That'll usually get them the, the right amount. Uh, you want your eyes on the ball. Now, Coach here, he doesn't – he's obviously taking a picture here, but his eyes aren't on the ball. My man here, he's got – he's looking at the ball. That way you're watching the snap. You're not listening to the count. And then, of course, you want that knee and nose over toe alignment. So, Coach, you can tell here he's doing a really good job. His nose is over his front toe, and he's got his knee correctly here. I hear some people talk about your foot. There's a big debate right now. Do you keep the foot straight? Do you keep it crooked? 
I just tell them start off with it straight because that's how I do it. But I have had guys that put it in a little bit on a 45, like my man here is. Uh, but, you know, I'm not real worried about that. I just want to make sure that they're not false stepping, which really comes back in the gear. I had to pull this off the internet too, guys, because just like everybody else, my state's on lockdown, so I wasn't able to get all my stuff. I usually have a bunch of good videos on this. But uh, this is a perfect stance, in my opinion. His hands are up. They're ready to do battle. He's got his fist up. His eyes are looking down at the ball. Okay, he's in a good athletic stance. He's not overstriding here. And I also like that his feet, you know, you look here, he's got his chin, his knee, and his toes in a straight line. So it's almost like he's holding a pole right through here, you know, keeping it on there. Um, you know, his feet are straight, slight bend in the elbows, and it's going to help him eliminate false starts. All right, since this is air raid oriented, um, I pulled this off of the web here. This is uh, Washington State. And as everybody knows, they probably run the air raid better than anybody. So what I did is we'll talk about, I see this a lot in high school, the slots, the H and the Y. So it's my man here and my man here, okay? If you're off the ball, you want your front foot on the back foot of the receiver. Often in high school, you'll see them, they'll be down here real wide and real deep. That's just extra steps that they have to take. So what I tell them in the air raid, that'd be the H and the Z. You want to put your front foot on the back foot of the receiver on the ball. It's going to get them shifted up higher to the football. Uh, any of the air raid guys in here know this. The H and the Y, those are your slots. The Y is on the ball on the right. The H is off the ball on the left. Your outside foot is up. The reason they do that is it times up with your routes better. There's certain routes. I'm a big guy that does routes on steps. I think you really need to share your steps. Not, you know, Yards are great, but it's really that habit of counting steps out and running your routes. So his outside foot is up, you know, his inside foot is back, and that gives you the great alignment. The X and Z, their inside foot is up, so it's switched. And as you can see here on the picture, his inside foot is up, his inside foot is up, so these are the outside receivers. And you tell them to align on the top of the numbers. Now, I know this guy is in the middle of the numbers, but that's because they're on the right hash. So you have to adjust accordingly to the hashes. Usually, you would be like this guy, He's right on top of the numbers over here, all right? But he's moved in two yards, so he's closer to the hash because of the down there. You don't want to be inside of this. We'll talk about this in a little bit later, but this part right here, the bottom of the numbers to the sidelines, that is not our property. That is the quarterback's property. And we can't trespass. That's what I tell him. You have to be invited into this area. And the only way he can invite you is by throwing the ball in there. So we never want to get caught running routes out here until he throws us into that area. So make sure that you're invited to the party. Always tell them, no trespass. Okay, release it. I've got some videos of this to show you guys, but here's some of the things we do. Foot fire is essential. And we use our foot fire drills during settle and noose, okay? Uh, we're doing fast hands, fast feet, and we're, uh, we're trying to outrun our hands here, okay? And on our releases, we're also trying to use the knife, and we're trying to use the high arm and low arm with the foam bag. And I'm going to show you how we do foot fire with the settle and noose drill, but I'm going to show you real quick. Coach, can you all see me on the screen still? Yes, sir. You can? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to get my grad assistant, my four-year-old son real quick. He's going to show you all something with a phone bag. Noah, where's your brother at? Your hand back. We got these foam bats. Uh, you can buy these at Walmart, Dollar General, anywhere. But usually they come like a little bit better. But I use these for release moves with receivers because I got tired of them beating my hands up. This is my assistant coach, Noah. He's four. Come here. All right. So if he's running his route, we talk about high arms. I put the bat on their arm, and he's going to swipe up, knocking the bat off. Okay? He's running to talk about low arm. He's running his route. He slaps the bat down. So he smacks it off his hand like that. So if you can see me a little bit here, hold this back, son. If I'm running my route and I touch my receiver with the bat on a high arm, I want him to come up and rip violently through it. In the same way, if I'm coming down, I'm running my route, I'm going to throw, boom, down and knock it off their hand. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Okay. So that's high arm and low arm with the foam back. The reason I went to the foam back 
was because I got tired of them breaking my forearms all the time. Okay, and we were on a budget. I didn't have a lot of money, so I had to buy one of those foam bats from Dollar General. Um, and we'll do that in pack and go, and noose, and all kinds of different things. But as long as you tell them to try to outrun their hands, they'll never, they'll never, they'll always be pumping their arms. And then using the knife is when we're working releases. I want their fist fist clenched when they're doing the releases. We talk about a low arm swim and a rip through. I've got a video of some of this stuff. Uh, like I said, Coach, my video is obviously in my office, and I can't get to that, so I had to pull this off the internet here, off of YouTube. This is the Texas Tech install, and they're going to be working foot fire. Okay, so I've recorded it for you. This guy does a pretty good job on foot fire. Now, you notice he's trying to outrun his hands, and he does what I call putting your ear on your shoulder. So every time he's sticking on that cone, he's firing, boom, he's putting his ear on his shoulder, listening to his shoulder pad for a head nod. Some people call it head nod. We'll actually do this inside of the noose drill, and I'll show you why in a minute. But, uh, you know, these guys do it better than anybody, and they're doing a really good job with the foot fire and the stick. Okay, on the releases, here's a video of some of the releases. They're going to foot fire. We do this on the same thing on settle and noose and pat and go. And he did what I like to call, uh, that's a rip, and that's, a, that's another rip, and you're going to see a low arm here in a minute. That's a low arm. So when you're doing your low arm, let me pause this real fast. Maybe when you're doing your low arm, you want to act like you got knives in your hands. Okay, you don't want them to swim. You don't want them to swim over the top because when I swim over the top, if I'm wide, they're going to grab a hold of me if they're a good DB. So I want to pretend like I got knives in my hand. Okay, I'm not promoting violence here. I just want to teach you. So I tell them when you're foot firing, you come over, you're going to hit with the hand, and you're going to drag your other hand across his hand like you're cutting his forearm with a knife. That's going to get his hands down and you getting around him to rip through. The same thing is when I'm firing my hands and I smack and I'm going to do a rip. I don't want to just rip his hands. I want to rip through like an uppercut and act like I'm cutting the side of him with a knife. That way I start stacking him on my release because I tell him all the time, you want to win on top of you. So if you notice these guys, they're going to release through and they're going to try to start winning on top of you. And we're doing this on noose drill. So he's going to foot fire release, low arm, went on top. And you can do it on a line, and it's going to show them how to get back on top of that line. And I'll scream at them, went on top when they don't get back on the line. Here it is in a route. He foot fires, hits them with a low arm, and then pat and go drill over the top. Hits them with a low arm and separate. So you can see these done, okay, in order. Now here is the uh, Settle and Noose Hillbilly Edition. Okay, so I like this one. This is how I've kind of changed uh, Settle and Noose drill. Um, it is the most important drill of the day, hands down. Uh, it's done in the early stages of practice. I like this to be the first drill that I do because I can get a lot of stuff done in this drill. When I've coached in the past, uh, my head coaches, if they've coached defense or whatever, they didn't give me a lot of any time. I never had time to do my cone drills. So I started incorporating my cone drills during settle and noose. And what I do, if you look here on the right, I set up three cones, okay? And we're doing that foot fire drill during noose drill. So our quarterback is here, he's dropping down a line. All right, there's a center here snapping him the ball. We'll work our release. And then I tell him to win on top. And then they're doing that 45 degree foot fire drill that we talked about. And we're gonna stick it on my trash can that I've got put down here. And as soon as they catch it, the key to this is called tight turn. I want them to catch that ball and tight turn immediately up the field. Now, I'll be right here, and I'm taking turns, because there's another line of them over here. And I'm trying to strip the ball for them, so I want to make sure they have ball security. And I put up an imaginary line, or I'll set up cones back here, whatever, and I want them to visualize scoring. So once they get here, they put the ball and the other arm away from me, they go high and tight, and they rip through. I'm trying to teach these receivers to be violent. You know, you, what you allow is what you coach. And I don't want my receivers to be soft. So I try to tell them, hey, run high and tight with the ball, rip through, and practice scoring. But I really like, like I said, I like doing the, the foot fire in this drill, and you'll see why in just a second. Um, let's see if I missed anything here. Oh, on the noose drill, I tell them, let me make sure this thing's still working. What I tell them is I want them to shorten the throw to the quarterback. 
okay? So once they stick, I want them to extend their arm, make their noose all the way to the quarterback. That way, I don't believe in PI, okay, on offense. I think if we're getting pass interference, it's our fault. We need to extend our arms out. That way, if they rip through our arms, then it's PI. I'm trying to body the throw. That's on me. He should be able to hit me as hard as he wants to. So I tell him, you know, you want to settle down and uh, shorten the throw to the quarterback. So I tell them to reach the arms out and catch it with their hand. Then emphasize the tuck, the tight turn by dropping your ear down. Okay, let's move on here now. Here's a video of it. And I'm gonna show you why I went to the 45 degree cone. And listen, this is Lincoln Raleigh and those guys. Uh -oh. Maybe not. Okay, so I'm not acting like I know more than Lincoln Riley. But this is their set on a noose drill. And like I said, this is why I went to the, the cone on this. So I've got my cone set up here. I didn't like this jog effect because everybody that's coached a high school kid knows they're not going to take it as serious as this guy is. And I just didn't like that it was half speed. I mean, I like – it's okay to warm up in it, but I want to see the release and I want to see that 45-degree foot fire and stick and then catch it. Now, he does a really good job of coming back to the quarterback and tight turning. I like that, shortening the throw. But I want him to explode through this and make a move on me while I try to strip him. Okay? So, and like I said, I'm not pretending like I know more than Lincoln Riley. I'm just trying to save time and work my cone drills inside of settling noose. And then there's a shot of the quarterbacks doing their thing. Okay, pat and go. I think this is another really important drill. Um, we do it every day. You can start off throwing a fast screen or a slant out of this. I'm just doing the go version right now because I want, you know, that's what everybody likes to see. Uh, but we're doing the same thing. So what I'll do is I'll have receiver one right here and then the receiver two on the top. They'll work that same release. And I tell them, you line on top of the numbers. I didn't draw this very well, but I don't want them staying on top of the numbers. The quarterback owns from the bottom of the numbers of the sidelines. They've got to invite us into that area. Uh, coach had somebody on there yesterday that said they did a study and none of the receivers ever completed a pass out of bounds. And I loved that. I thought that was perfect. But uh, – it's the same way, you know, I got release and I need to be thrown into this area. Okay, now here's the key to this drill. Once I release, if I'm doing outside release or inside release, I've got to win back on top. Now I'll be standing over here with that foam back and as they're running their route, I'll put it on their high arm or their low arm and they've got to smack that bat off of them. I want them to get used to running routes and smacking defenders' hands off of them. Okay, the second part to this is once you get a young receiver, they'll try to look back at the quarterback for the football. You want them looking up, not back. You want this to be a hard catch. Everybody says, make it a hard catch, make it a hard catch. So you want them looking up, and then you want to see their head do this. Okay? And the easiest way, everybody says put your eyes on the ball. Okay, if I'm trying to catch a ball over here, I can keep my head straight and pull my eyes this way. I don't like that. I tell them to put your chin on the ball. Because anywhere you move your chin, your eyes go with you. So put your chin on the ball, look up, and see their head snap. Once they complete it, tap their feet, get out of bounds, or keep going vertical. Now, they'll run over here. There'll be another quarterback on this side, the quarterback down here. This, this is called wisdom, okay, because I've done this for a long time. The first time you do this, all these receivers, and Joe Salas can say amen to this, they'll start throwing the football back at the quarterback. No. Watch them catch it. Tell them to go high and tight so they're working ball security drill. Have them jog to be in front of the quarterback, and then they're going to be the ones that snaps the ball to the quarterback. Okay, that's wisdom. Because if not, they're going to be there's footballs flying everywhere. They're going to be hitting the quarterback with the ball. You're going to be kicked off. So make sure they're the ones snapping the ball. But if they're not doing high and tight all the way to the quarterback, then they're not doing this drill right. Because I'm trying to work as many drills as I can during this. Here's a video of it. This is again, East Carolina doing pat and go. They do it a little different than I do. So like I said, this would actually be a receiver down here. Of course, they've got tons of grad assistants and stuff. So this would be the receiver in line. They're gonna work their release. I would be about right here with my back doing a high arm or a low arm. And then I want them looking up, not back for the ball. Cause we're not allowed in this area. This is the quarterback's area. If he throws us there, we can get it. All right, like I said, you don't have to start off with these long throws. You can do a slant, you can do an out, you can do a, a quick screen, 
whatever kind of route you want to do first to get the quarterback loose, you can. But this isn't just a bomb. And, guys, I'll tell you this. Do the long throw second. Do pat and go short and pat and go long because you never have to tell a receiver, hey, I want to, uh, I want to go out there and run a deep route. They all want to do that. Okay, so start off doing the quick throw first, the slant or the fast screen, and then they'll want to do the go route. Okay, do we have any questions, Coach? Uh, not right now, Coach. Okay, good deal. <clears throat> Stalking and fast screen. All right, I get this all the time. We call it Randy and Larry's. Okay, I sat at a coach's rules clinic one year, and I was talking to one of the referees, and I asked him, I said, my receivers keep getting called for holds. What suggestions do you have? And he, and he told me this. I never forgot it. He said, hands do not get holding penalties. Feet do. And I thought, what the heck does that mean? And he said, listen, we know people grab inside. But as long as their elbows are tight and their feet are moving and their belt is on each other's belt and they're not doing one of these deals, he said, we're ne- as long as they're in here, we're never going to call penalties. He said, I've never figured out why receivers don't just get their feet real wide and just run with the guy. And I was like, dang, I'm going to start teaching that. So what I tell them is, I want you to be physical. Every drill we do, we teach being nasty, okay? So we hit, we lock, we shove, we're getting nasty, we're getting our hands inside, and we, we chop our feet. I tell them, get, you know, grass is hot, get your feet hot, grass hot, okay? So they're chopping their feet, their hands are inside, elbows tight, belt on belt, all that stuff, slow man wins, okay? But when you talk about when it comes to receiving uh, screens, Randy's and Larry's, you want to protect the reception area. All right, and I'll show you what the reception area is on film in just a second. But in order to do that, you got to go flat. <clears throat> and I tell them, I want you to win the outside block. I've never – I played receiver. I never understood this. We'll throw fast screens out there, you know, and we will not tell the receiver how we want him to run it. All right? No, we want you to get five yards. And it's, when you catch that ball, we want you to go outside first. So that would be like me looking at a running back and saying, hey, man, uh, we're running to the right find a hole, and then he bounces it and you get mad at him or he starts dancing around. No, we don't do that inside the box. So I try to make it an extension of our run game outside. So I tell him, win the outside shoulder. Protect the reception area. Okay, come flat. Those guys will come to you. You're gonna, it's going to turn into an ISO outside. The reason I tell him to win outside and attack the outside shoulder is I want that receiver to get outside because as long as we block that corner outside, we've only got to beat one man. All right? We're going to get seven or eight yards of pop. You'll see it on film here in a second. The only time he doesn't go outside is when you can't, okay? So, like I said, it's always outside until it's not. So, that means that corner has flown out to the number. He's almost to the sideline. He's trying to get you to cut it up. Then I tell the receiver, okay, push him out of side. The guy that's receiving the ball, after he catches the ball, he's only allowed one cut on fast screens, one. He makes a cut inside. He wins back on top of the block, and he gets back outside on the numbers because all the bad guys are inside. So, you know, I'm real detailed when it comes to our fast screens. Here's what they look like on film. Um, I may have to mute this. Shout out to Drew Piscopo. I am the Ash County president of West Virginia. He does a good job of uh, uh, running the air raid down there, guys. So I, I pulled up his film because he, he does a really good job on Randy's and Larry's. Uh, I might have to mute this because it had music earlier. Nope, I don't have to mute it. Okay, so here's the reception area. It's one step behind where the receiver is, okay? That gives the quarterback an aiming point all the time. All right, he's got a pretty good one here, number one, Austin Poe. Any of you college guys, you might want to recruit him. All right, but this is the reception area. It's one step behind the outside receiver. So I need to come flat and protect that area and attack the outside and then get vertical. Uh, he did a really good job there. He pushed him to the out of bounds there. So like I said, here's the reception area. He stands still, he gets the outside. That's a guaranteed 10 yards every time. Okay, and it's just one block that way. So here's the reception area. The quarterback's thrown to that spot. I need to come flat, attack the outside shoulder, and get it upfield. All right, and we'll rep this, we'll do drills. We do, you know, two on two, three on three. Now, if I was running the bubble screen out here or a, a key screen, a pet or whatever, this is still the reception area. So he would just back into this area. So it's the same throw for the quarterback every time. And then once again, this kid does a really good job of getting outside. Which is why I think this kid can play some more. 
All right, so if I'm this guy, here's the reception area. Let's play on throw it over here. Yep. All right, good job breaking down in front. He gets the outside shoulder. Almost a 20-yard gain. If we ran ice and got 20 yards of pop, everybody would be happy. Doesn't matter what formation you do it out of, it stays the same. Here's the reception area. Fast hands, fast feet, turn and burn. Stop. Now, I would have liked him to get outside, but he read the butt and he went up and cut it up, okay? Still a 15, 20-yard gain. All right, guys, so that's uh, the fast screens. Now, Coach, I, I tried to leave a lot of time for these guys to ask questions. So they got any questions on routes or whatever, just have them holler at me. So. What you got, Coach? Did somebody got a question? No, we're good. Okay. Well, I was just going to tell them I'm opening it up to them. If there's a certain route they want to see, um, I can draw it up for them. Yeah. You know what I'm hey, saying? One second. Hold on one second, Coach Nat. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you right back. All right, man. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, we got a couple questions coming in. Talk about how you teach four verts to each position. Okay, and another shameless plug here. If you go to the 92 Mesh Group, Coach Piscopo did a really good job on showing four verts. The way I teach it is these outside guys, one outside release on the numbers, and I'm drawing this as good as I can. Okay, they got the verts. We got another vert here. Okay, the inside guys have steam reads. So what does that mean? They can go outside release, and they can set it down at 10 yards right here, okay? And they're, they're reading an open hash rule. So these the H and the Y out of ACE, two by two for me is ACE, if the free safety <clears throat> drops and he stays on the hash, you can set this down at 10 yards, okay? If he drops off of the hash, like he's trying to take away this go route, or if there's one safety and he just drops vertical or whatever, you continue to go vertical on your route. My outside guys are, are releasing, okay, and they're running goes. Um, I, I let the quarterback check things down, so if we're in a soft zone, we can check into hitches. Okay, but if not, he's going to outside release and run a go. What I tell them is if they're in a, like a zone turn, so that means they're shuffling out, they're looking at the receiver, they're not looking at the quarterback, the DB, you can run what I call a stop route or a comeback route at 15 yards. So you're going to go 5, 10, 15, curl in like a curl, and you're going to whip back out to the sidelines like a comeback. So if I draw it up, it's going to look like that, okay? Um, the key point to this route when you're running the comeback is you want the outside release, went on top, get vertical, 5, 10, 15. They're going to they're gonna throttle down, and I do this drill too. They're going to throttle down. I tell them to act like they're picking up a suitcase, okay? Because you want them to still pump their arms full speed, but they're going to slow down and get their nose over their toes by picking up that suitcase, and they're going to push back to the quarterback. The key for a receiver when it comes to uh, breaking off a route is you want to teach them how to use their break point on their foot. The break point of your foot is the inside arch of your foot on your shoe. So if you got a shoe, it's that inside part of your shoe right here. You want to push that back to the quarterback. So I'm pushing back to him. And then, of course, we would mirror this on both sides. I tell the quarterbacks to read outside in. They find the lowest corner and attack that side. If we were doing it out of the three by one, it would look like this, okay? So X, H, and Z would have the same routes. That Those would not change. And then I would have my uh, Y. Some people tell him to get to the other hash. I like keeping it simple. And I tell him to run an under Sam over my crossing route but he's got to come flat on that cross. I know that's a terrible drawing, okay? But he's got to go under Sam, over Mike, and come flat on the crossing route. Now, here's the deal with the, the under Sam, over Mike, okay? People always say, you got to get under Sam, over Mike, under Sam, over Mike.
Guys, here's the easiest way to teach it. Tell him to run at the hip of the Mike linebacker. I want to run directly at his hip. Once I get on his hip, I need to climb him vertically, no deeper than about 12 yards, okay? And then once I get on top of him, I need to expect the football because the, once I get on top, I'm open because I'm going to throw my elbow, my inside elbow, and kind of like I'm trying to break glass on my back and come flat. You don't want to drift. I kind of drift on here. But you don't want to drift. You want to come underneath this safety, all right? So understand over my climb, throw my elbow, come flat, and hit it up in this area. Most of the time, this ball – is completed either on the hash or right before the hash. You ask that quarterback to hold on to it this long, it's hard, it's hard to do, okay? But I also tell him if this mic blitzes, this is why it's important to tell him to run at the hip of the mic. If he blitzes, you convert this to a hot slant now. So if he leaves, I look. So he leaves, I look. If he, to this mic, let me draw a mic here. If he blitzes, I replace with a quick slam. If he drops, I'm still attacking his hip. <clears throat> I'm climbing him, and I'm coming flat underneath the crossing ring. There was a question here in regards to if you had uh, if you had film uh, to show on that stop route from the outside receiver. Um, I'm, I don't, got I apologize, guys. All my stuff is at my office computer. I, I do, and coach, if you want, I can send them to you, and then you can send them out. Yeah, I'll put on the drive. I'll put on the drive. Yeah, well, I'll try to get out there and get it. But right now, our state's on lockdown, so I can't no, even get them. I hear you. Um, how would you adjust any of those drills uh, for junior high kids? I've done this with junior high kids. Um, I've coached everywhere, guys. I've coached college. I've coached middle school. I've coached at a high school that had 70 boys. I've coached at um, – I'm at high school now. It's triple A's, as big as you can get in West Virginia. You know, we got over 1,000 kids in the building. Um, but you don't change the drills – what you do is you change the reps, okay? So, obviously, if you got more kids, it's going to take you a little longer to do the drill. If you only got about eight or nine receivers total, they're only going to need to go through it about two or three times because you don't want to wear their legs down. Um, the key to this, though, is, is just hitting those buzzwords and keep doing the same things over and over. Uh, where are we at? Uh, favorite concept versus 4-3, cover four. four th well, anytime you get a 4-3 and a two-high structure, to me – I'm trying to build trips, all right, because I want to see how they adjust to the box count, and I want to see what they do with that apex guy. Uh, cover four beaters, obviously cross is good. Four verts kills it if you go into trips. Why stick, why corner, all those are my favorite two high beaters. Uh, ideal placements for skill sets and body types. Oh, great yes. question. Okay. Um, if you've got four great receivers, then obviously it doesn't matter. <laughs> Nobody ever gets put in that boat. Uh, my best kid goes to Z, this kid right here off the ball, because I can do some motions and stuff with him. Let me move him over here. Um, I can do some motions and stuff with the Z. So that's my best receiver, my best route runner. Uh, why? It just depends. Usually if he's a big body guy, that's okay, because he's the one that sets the mesh. He runs the cell, the cross. He doesn't have to be the first read on things. So if he's a little bit slower, it's okay. I just need to make sure he has good hands, and it's pretty tough. Uh, X is my fast guy. He has to be a burner. Uh, if he can catch, awesome. But usually it works like this. Everybody has that tall, lanky kid that catches the ball about 65% of the time, but he can absolutely fly. I put him at X. And then H is my leftover receiver. The, the last one I've got goes there. Sometimes it's a running back. Um, but, you know, just your typical slot H kid goes here. Uh, what's your go-to route, uh, route concept if you got to get your quarterback out of the pocket due to uh, protection problems? Well, I don't roll a lot. Um, people roll on 94, which is why sell, and they also boot off a of Y cross. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I've been there. We've all had protection problems. Uh, you know, if, I, if I'm having constant protection problems, though, I, I would do blitz pickup more. I would also suggest talking to Shane Dular. He's a great O-line coach. Vertical set solves a lot of those problems. Uh, coach Mummy has been known to say that vertical setting allows you to die a slow death, okay? You're just getting ran over slowly. So, you know, inside, outside, inside, outside punch, and just you can either do half man, half slide, or you can do the old air raid where we count people out. 
Um, but if you have to roll, especially at junior high, I would roll off a of flood concept. So you can flood weak with cross, you can flood strong with sail. Or you, I've seen some people flood to uh, fade out even, you know, at younger levels. Uh, how are you? How are you teaching uh, those receivers to avoid underneath defenders who are being taught to collision and stop the cross? To stop the wide cross? Yes. Well, the good news is, is if they're really colliding a lot on the cross route, I've, you got to draw the whole the whole shebang up here. Okay. So on ninety five, like I said, this is not drawn well. I'm not an artist, guys. I am a hillbilly. All right, so if you're getting a lot of that stuff, okay, terrible routes. All right, you know, we're in 95, we have the go route, outside release go, we got the sell, we got cross, and we got post dig. To me, if we're getting banged in here a lot, nobody's either on the back or they're vacating this hole. So let's drop a mic, and let's drop a wheel. Okay, they're in some type of that. So if this mic is really banging in here or dropping back and hitting him, and this wheel is really driving down and colliding on this like they're so used to seeing mesh, that's a big hole back here for this post curl option. You know, the post curl, you inside release, push up seven yards, break to the post for three, and you tell him to look at the quarterback. And as he's looking at the quarterback, he's trying to ID where this linebacker is to find the hole. It's called a hunt route. All right. If he is driving down, he can set down almost immediately. All right. If he's kind of hitting him and then walling back, he needs to bring it in a little bit. Here's the here's the trick to telling them when to settle because everybody always asks me this. They're settling down and the quarterback's throwing the ball and they're not paying attention. When he comes out, when that Z comes out of that route, he's got to ID the quarterback first. And what I tell him is this: if the quarterback is looking at you, you keep going across because you. He's going to throw it, okay? If he's not looking at you, you can settle it down. So I try to tell him, you know, if he's looking at you, keep running. If he's not looking at you, you can settle it into grass, all right? And it's kind of the same way here with all this stuff. Uh, also, our mesh routes take care of a lot of all that stuff, too. And I can, I can show a mesh if they want to see mesh, how I teach it. Um, how are you teaching your Y to run that sale route? Well, well on 94 – he would run the cell, but the H, and I teach them the same way. Um, their outside foot is up, okay? You know, so like they're facing to the right, their left foot is up. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. On the seventh step, they're putting their ear on their shoulder. So as I'm running, I've got to influence that defender, okay? So I'm outside releasing him, getting on top again because I got to widen me. Once I get on top, I'm counting seven steps. Around my sixth step, I need to put my ear on my shoulder to influence that safety, okay? And it's going to roll me out, and I'm going to climb on my eighth step and look up on my ninth for a high ball on the set. Uh, how are you teaching the spot route? The spot route. This uh, post curl back here? Mm, let me see. Hey guys, I'm sorry. Uh, for the snag, for the for the snag concept. Oh, for a snag. Okay. Let me go here real fast. Let me, let me fix this up. We'll just we'll just go through the whole thing here. That's your F. All right, so what you're going to do, and the question was, what, what do we do with Z, okay? This is what they were calling a spot route. He is your third read on this, but you're going to foot fire. So he does his foot fire, influence outside. I tell him to listen to his right shoulder pad, just boom, stick, okay, just like the same drill we were running. And he's going to come flat over where Y started at around five yards and sit down. Now, 
Here's the key to this route. Will is not going to sit there. They play defense. They move, okay? As soon as he crosses your face, because he's either going to do one of two things. He's either going to drop back on the corner route, because our man here has a corner route. Okay, so he's, he's running that, all right? And my man here has a free release. Some people call it a shoot. Some call it an arrow. Some swing, whatever. Okay, he's running out here. He's either going to drop back on this corner or he's going to fly to this shoot. If not, you, you've completed the ball. It doesn't matter, okay? But as soon as this guy crosses your face, as soon as he crosses your face, Z, you turn into noose drill, you throw, throw your hands up, shorten the throw, catch the ball, and tight turn and get vertical. Everybody always asks me about this route. They'll say, I'm not getting a lot of yards on this. That's because they're not sitting down when the wheel – crosses their face or they're not tight turning and they're running into the mic. I know a lot of people will say this, well, what do you do when the mic flies out and tries to take away this? Well, Coach Leach is a lot smarter than I am. He's got a slant on the back side of this, okay? So our quarterback, if we're getting a lot of mics flying out trying to take away this or the stick and the wheels trying to take away the back, we always have this slant area vacated. You got to know where the the bubbles are, as George says, where the defense is. So we'll go the way that we read it. I like going one to the back, two to the corner, three to the snag, and then like your quarterback will just see it, like as he's looking down here. If this guy's flying out, he'll see the blur, and he knows he's got this backside slant. A lot of times, though, the wheel will either drop. Or he'll try to take, he'll try to sit right here on this. If he does that, you just throw to your back. Uh, and that, that's a five step corner, Justin. Uh, you want it to be quick. The reason it's five steps because your inside foot's off the ball. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five. You're on your shoulder, stick, boom, make a double move. And then you're breaking this either to the, I like running this in the red zone. So that'd be a back pylon throw. Or if you're within the 25, it's more of like an out. More like a sell route, like a quick sell. Do you ever run mesh with the Z or X? And if so, do they switch their feet up? Oh man, uh, I used to always run until recently. I always ran mesh with the X. Um, I've got some good stuff on mesh. I used to have film of it. I have to send it out, Justin. But uh, yes, I used to do that with X. Uh, and I, I would tell him he could change his feet if we did that. I, Drew is the one that really got me on this, uh, is doing it like how Leach does it, which is meshing these inside guys. You know, they're running the mesh. Like I said, I know it's a terrible drawing. And these outside guys are running the out. I love running it this way. Drew did a great explanation on this the other day. Putting him on a swing. Uh, the key to the mesh routes, no matter who's running it, is this. You always want the Y set in the mesh, okay? But then you get into things where what if you move the Y to the right or the left, I mean, like in the late, you know, trips left formations and stuff. Just tell the guys to always slap left hands. If you're slapping left hands, it makes the guy on the right side of the formation set in the mesh. And you don't want it any deeper than six yards, okay? Here's another practice tip. When we're running mesh drill, we get really good at mesh drill, okay? I'm out there with a stopwatch, and I'm sitting right here at this mesh point. That's me right there with a stopwatch. And I'm screaming tight turn, and I'm acting like I'm timing them on their mesh route. And I'm telling them it's a 40-yard dash to the mesh point, because if not, those guys will jog, and they'll kind of goof around. And it's a sprint. <laughs> 40 yard dash to the mesh point, which is where I'm standing at. As soon as they catch it, it turns into noose drill. Shorten the throw, tight turn, get vertical. If you're not getting two strikes, what I tell them two strikes is like, you know, the yard marks on the practice field, 5, 10, you got to score, okay? Tight turn, get two strikes. Tight turn, get two strikes. But that's how you set the mesh on this. You want to slap left hand. Uh, could you use a whip route? By the age to by the age to attack collision and or man coverage. I've never done that. Uh, Neil Brown, when they were at Troy, he did a lot of whips. They called it 92 return, um, and it was just a tag for him. 
I'm not trying to speak for Neil, but you know, they would come in here almost like like stick. But guys, the, here's the thing: the way that I teach stick, and I've always done it this way. I'm, I'm like I'm like leech when it comes to stick. All right. So there's guys with this with this new RPO stuff. They're teaching stick different, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, those guys know what they're talking about. Um, but the way that I taught that it was taught to me was you attack the inside shoulder of the defender who's on top of you or whoever the apex is. I don't know where that went. Okay, so like if I got a wheel here, I need to make sure that I'm attacking his inside shoulder. And as soon as I, you know, no more than four steps, I can either set that down, like if he's playing in here, or if he flies over, I can whip that out on my fourth step to grass. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to me, on my quarterback wristband, I always pair up uh, 92 and 618, which is why stick. Okay, and this kind of goes back into the same thought process. I've got the shoot going out here. Okay, I've got I've got my go route going here, outside release go. Okay, how are they going to take now? 618 to me is a two high beater. All right, so we got the corner. Let's say he's setting soft or setting down like cover two. I mean, setting hard. We got a safety up here. All right. If he comes down hard on this shoot route, I've got a hole throw. If he bails, I'm playing games off of this wheel. I'm going stick to here. So if he flies down, I'm throwing the stick. That's why I'm setting it down on four steps, inside shoulder. If he flies out and tries to take the stick, I'm throwing to the back. Now, how are they going to take that away? The mic, remember that mic? They play defense, okay? If that mic is flying out here, like I said, I wish I, I had some really good film of this, but if that mic is sitting here, and he flies out here to take the stick, and he flies out, the wheel flies out here to take the, the shoot, and the corner drops back on this go route, then I have my backside slant built in just like I did on Y corner. Y corner and Y stick protect each other. Okay, so just think about that. Now, how are they going to take that away? Man, man, they're going to bring the wheel down, bring the rover down, take away stick. That's when I would start calling Y corner because the rover's down in the box, down like cover zero. Now I need to go vertical with my Y and bring him up. All right, so that's, to me, you can run 92 return, but I'm getting the same thing out of 618. Could you, uh, could you discuss, the, uh, the coach actually wanted to uh, discuss the H on, <clears throat> on that whip out of uh, Y cross. Oh, could you run a whip on that? Well, I like I said, you can you can teach the whip out on that on Y cross. The way and George does a really good job of explaining this. Cole Tharp, I we used to put him on an option route. The sale route is kind of a newer thing. Um, so, coach, let me let me talk to you about it like as an option route because I've never done a whip. If I was going to teach a whip route. To answer your question, I would sell it like a slant since my outside foot is up. You know, I'm driving one step with my inside foot, whipping around with my second. I would take three hard steps inside, plant my foot back to the quarterback, and whip back out to the sideline. But the way that we used to run the option route is he would outside release for three steps. He could set it down. If nobody was there, he could – break it out if he felt like this wheel like let's say there's a wheel here now and the sand's on the other side like that's the sand okay but let's say this wheel is kind of taking away that sit you can run the out on it now what they used to do they'd get pretty smart here because they got tired of just throwing screens and stuff is they would bring the wheel out here on top of him and he took away the sit and the out. So then we started finding grass. We started running ends. Okay. If you go back and watch How Mummy when they were at UK with Tim Couch, I can't remember that running back's name. He was the H for them. Scott, I think, was his last name. He was the man at running these routes because he he got here and break it in. And, you know, there'd be a big piece of grass because that wheel so used to this back going out there in the flats on shoot routes and out routes. And so he would see this. 
and he would fly out here and he would come inside. Uh, but when you're running 95, so you're running that cross route, like we were talking about a minute ago, attack the hip of the mic, coming over here, coming flat. All you're really doing is you're making this wheel wrong. Okay? Like you were talking about the collisioning. Okay? So if this wheel tries to take away H, that's a long run for that mic to come over here on this hash and take that. If this wheel drops, okay, you've either got the sail or you've got this option, depending on how you want to run it. You know, you can throw this five or six yard route. Um, if, if the wheel flies out here and this mic flies out here, and you got the whole shot with the corner, okay, because you got safety playing up here. The corner comes up, takes away. Uh, do you ever say a certain amount of steps should get you to a certain amount of yards? Depends on the kid. I mean, there's one cat I had. I had to change steps. He was long. He could run, too. We, you know, we call that a freak. You just do what you do, son. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you, know, you don't want to overcoach the freaks. Okay, that's a Gunner Brewer thing. Gunner Brewer's a good one to follow, too. Uh, you got a freak, you let him run. Um, but usually the steps work out. Uh, you know, you just got to play with it. And if you guys are doing the air raid route, you're air raid correctly, you're running routes on air, you're doing seven on seven, you're going to figure out how many steps those routes come. So don't undersell running one-on-ones because you really figure out their steps on one-on-ones. You can do that when the O-line and the running backs are doing uh, inside run period. Take them down there on the goal line and run one-on-ones. You want to talk about becoming a good air raid team, complete it on the five again. Uh Coach, do you use isolation plays in combination with your mesh concept? If uh, if so, how often do you use it? The only – we don't really isolate anybody. The X and the Z can either run out or the quarterback, depending on safeties. You know, if they're one high safety and he's playing further over here to the right or further over here to the left, he can put them on a post if he sees that grab. He just gives them a signal – Grab your face mask, touch your head, pick your nose, I don't care. But he just tells them it's a post, and they can break it off into a post. Good deal. <clears throat> uh, anybody else uh, have any questions for Coach? Coach, you want to just throw up uh, your contact information again, just in case anybody missed it? Yeah, man. Y'all get a hold of me. Yeah, feel free to, to reach out on Twitter or email if you have any questions in regards to some of these drills or – or anything. Yeah, and Coach, uh, whenever you want to send that to me, I'll, I'll post it to the drive um, so those guys have access to it. Yeah, it's got all the routes and everything on it, Coach. I just, like I said, I hate it, but everybody knows how it is right now. We're all locked down. I yep. yeah. Yeah, we're, I told you we're heading there Monday, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at.